Good morning. Let's make sure everything's up and running here. It's connecting um, on Facebook and YouTube, and we are live. Good morning. Hey, happy Friday. Hope you guys had a great week. And remember, life is good. All right. It's not easy. It's not always simple. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's even painful, but it certainly is good um, if we make it that way. Well, let's see here. I hope you had a great week in voiceover. I'm very excited today. It has nothing to do with voiceover. I'm excited because uh, my wife and I are going to visit our grandkids this weekend. So the parents, our daughter and son-in-law, are going to be out of town, and so we get to hang out with them. And uh, looking forward to that. That's going to be going to be a lot of fun. So, well, it's Friday morning, and it, I see you guys checking in. Thank you, as always. I appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you get notifications as soon as I go live, and you can stay in touch with all the latest information regarding, um, regarding voiceover. And, uh, and if you like the, you know, the content, I'd appreciate a, uh, a like, a thumbs up, and uh, pass the word along. Share it with a friend. So we've got folks checking in this morning from Columbus. Yeah, that's my, that's, well, Columbus, Ohio is my old stomping ground. Uh, we got Indy and uh, Louisville, Texas. Yeah, all right, guys. We'll keep checking in as you come in. And, of course, today uh, dedicated to answering questions. And so we're going to take a few minutes, and I'll take some questions that you have this morning. So what's on your mind Um what is standing, this is a question yesterday I had, um, I may have mentioned this before, but in my, my voiceover blueprint, I do somewhere between 25 to 28 live, part of it, this is part of it, 25 to 28 live uh, coaching sessions like this per month. When I say like this, I mean it's, it's online. Uh, but we get together and uh, we talk about some are dedicated to marketing, uh, some are dedicated to performance. Uh, some are Q&A. Sometimes I have my students get on and they'll read and I'll direct them and give them feedback. Mallory does one on the, just on the Fiverr platform. My son, uh, the audio engineer, Alex, does one just on, on audio tech. Um, but if you've got something on your mind this morning, well, what, like, what I was leading up to was yesterday I was doing a webinar with my newer students. It's called a quick start webinar, just to try to find out how I can help them. And the question I ask them is the question I'll ask you. What is standing between you and voiceover success? So if you have it, first of all, if you've made your first dollar in voiceover, if you've, you know, you've been doing this and you're, you're working, you've got at least a job, congratulations. That's any time that you've, once you've overcome that initial barrier, of getting the first job, that's a huge deal, congratulations. But if you're just out of the gate and you haven't, if you haven't made the first dollar in voiceover, what's, what do you believe is standing between you and that? Let me know and we can talk about that and I'll be glad to answer questions regarding that. Is it okay to use a noise gate to get minus 60 dB? My room is around my, uh, fifth, minus 50 dB. Yeah, uh, I use a gate. Alejandro, uh, the thing is you have to be very careful though because gates gates are tricky and not all gates are created. A noise gate is something that that um, imagine I'm figuratively opens and closes a gate to, like the gate opens to when you speak and it closes when you when you're not speaking. And that way, uh, in theory, the background noise doesn't come through. I say in theory because there are a couple of different controls and I'm not going to get into a deep dive on on noise gates but you can kind of control how much gets through and how aggressive that gate is. And some gates are more transparent. In other words, um, with my gate, you can't tell that I'm using a gate. And so you have to be really careful. Uh, there's a fine line there and you need to make sure that, again, it's very transparent, but it, a, a gate will not make up for a loud room, but minus 50 dB is not loud. So I think uh, it would be worth a try. Uh, let's see here. Good morning from Kimball. I'm not sure where Kimball is, but good morning. Good to have you here this morning. Cleveland was just there last weekend. All right. <laughs> good to have Canada here. Finally caught the live stream. All right. Uh, we've got York, Yorker, Ontario. Okay, Yorker, Ontario. Great. Thank you. Okay, here's a question for Bruce. I was listening to some of my test videos, and I noticed I can hear when I inhale a lot. Is there software that removes that sound? Inhaling, that's just 
um, I mean, essentially, that's that's a breath. That's uh, when we talk about removing breaths. That's what we're talking about. You can you can help it by first of all, never rely on hardware or software to do the heavy lifting. That's like the final step in the process. Being aware of your inhaling can help you become uh, a little more to be a little more, uh, how shall I say, kind of tiptoe around that. In other words, you've got to breathe. But if you if you do it, like if you go before you take a, before you read a sentence, okay, once you're aware of that, okay, instead of breathing like this, I'm going to breathe like this. I did it, but I did it softer. So that's the free, you know, physically, you need to adjust as best you can. And what happens is that becomes ingrained in your muscle memory and it becomes habit. And that goes a long way. Once you've done that, there, yeah, the isotope has debreathing software. Um, Waves.com has debreathing software that can help uh, as well. Hey, Anthony, in New York. Awesome. St. Louis, Louisville, Louisiana. Okay. Self-confidence is my biggest obstacle. <clears throat> that and money. Yeah, self-confidence is everybody's biggest obstacle. I mean, in all honesty, Jessica, it's never, it's easy to assume that everybody else feels differently than you do. And I can guarantee you they don't. Um, and self-confidence doesn't automatically go, I mean, the issue of self-confidence doesn't go away when you start making money and even making a lot of money in voiceover. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. You will get more confident. And the com more confident you are, the better your voiceover performance will become. But it's always something that I think a performer has in the back of their mind. Um, there's always a, an awareness that, you know, they have to perform. And am I good enough? And can I do this? I mean, I know it's, an, you know, I still, I wrestle with it. I mean, and I know I'm good at what I do, but it doesn't keep you from questioning yourself. Now, again, it becomes less severe over time. There's varying degrees of self-confidence. Um, but I will tell you this, the longer you do this, the more you learn, the more repetition. And then as you start to get jobs, your confidence will certainly grow. It absolutely will grow. Um, and it will make a, a big difference in the way you function and operate in voiceover. And then the money begins to flow as well. All right, Tim's trying to create a quiet place to record. Um, that's always the biggest obstacle. I mean, well, I just said self-confidence is an obstacle. Psychologically, it is. Physically, get you know, setting up your space to record. For years, I was never satisfied. I was always tweaking and drove Vicky, my wife, absolutely nuts. I was always trying this or that or experiment, moving to another room and and until I finally landed on a place, and I did discover there's no 100% perfect place, but you've got to find the best place you have, and then you do everything you can to quiet it. And uh, that might mean using more materials than you originally planned uh, to dampen the sound reflections, you know, from the wall and ceiling and such. Um, you just keep, you just keep at it. You'll get it. You'll figure it out. I did. We all, well, we, we all do. Those of us who hang around long enough, we do. <laughs> Oh, yeah, trying to get the DJ out of the voice. Yeah, Doug, I, I hear you. I mean, that's, you know, I spent two decades of my life doing that. And uh, I still I still drift into that. And sometimes I'll have a, um, you know, when I'm working on a session, a director will, will make me aware of that. And um, I've become much better at it over time, but it certainly is an ongoing process. Somerset, England. Awesome. Good to have you here this morning. Hey, Joe. Yeah, that's right. Life is good. Oh, my goodness. Let's see here. Oh, I just lost my place. I think the live stream is moving around on me here. Hey, Dave in Norco, California. <clears throat> Good morning to you. Reed says, hi, Bill. When doing your auditions with music for inspiration, how do you not have the music bleed into the track? Well, Reed, first of all, I don't actually play the music when I'm recording the audition. I, I practice. I read it a few times with the music playing to find the emotion. Then I turn it off. Now, that being said, you could, you could, could record it. Um, you could record your voice without the music. 
uh, you, it would require closed back headf headphones. These are open back headphones, which experts and gurus will tell you not to wear in voiceover. But um, when you spend a lot of time behind a microphone, you need something lightweight, comfortable. These are Ultrasone S-Logic HFI 15G. They don't even make them anymore, but they're super lightweight. Uh, I actually used a pair of these in a the studio in Chicago once um, on, a, on a session. I loved them, and uh, I've worn them since. These will bleed because they're open back. Um, but if you have closed back, which I do, I, you know, I've got, uh, you know, I've got the, you know, the professional studio closed back headphones, but they just, they're not as comfortable and they don't sound as good. But anyhow, again, you, you can do it. You can get by. You can, you can do that without having to bleed. Hey, buddy, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey there. Dory says, okay, I love this. She says, listen to Don't Stop Believing, uh, or Don't Stop, not Don't Stop Believing. That's a uh, journey. Don't Stop, by Fleetwood Mac yesterday to energize a roofing TV spot. It helped so much. Client loved it. <laughs> I love it. Dory, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. What off-the-shelf material would I suggest to treat a 3 by 7 closet? Well, if you're wanting, you know, just off-the-shelf, like dampening, say pure dampening uh, material, then I'm, you know, I, I'm a big fan of moving blankets. You want to get the thickest, heaviest ones you can. You may have to overlap them, I mean, and use multiple, two, three, on top of each other. But I think moving blankets are an easy go-to. Uh, but, you know, when I'm working, um, we have a place in Hilton Head, and um, it's a condo, and I keep some old couch cushions and storage there. And when we go there and stay there for any kind of extended period of time, I literally pull out couch couch cushions cushions and build a fort on top of a, a card table. And I've got students who do that. Um, they post pictures all the time in our uh, private Facebook group, and they do it with great success. So, you know, pillows, cushions, but uh, usually the first thing I think about if I'm just wanting something that's, uh, I don't want to say cheap necessarily, but, but certainly budget-friendly, I think uh, moving blankets are a good place to start. Then you can get it, but if you, if you have a little more money to spend, you can get into sound blankets, uh, which they're professionally designed specifically for that purpose. They're more expensive. Automute, uh, there's a link to Automute in the description of uh, this YouTube video. That's uh, Check them out. I mean, I have a bunch of those. It's my, my last studio was covered in Automute sound blankets. It, they were amazing, amazing. We've moved, and I haven't really settled in. I don't know exactly where I'm going to keep my studio. I'm not crazy about where I'm at, but my basement's not finished yet, so I haven't put them up yet. But those are my personal favorites. Polly's Island, South Carolina. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Mark. I need to do something, anything for marketing. I just can't, I can't seem to just do it. Well, Michael, and here's the thing. First of all, you just have to realize, and you probably know this already, but just let me remind you again, without marketing, nothing happens. Um, you can have a great product, but if, you can, if you're not marketing it and nobody knows about it, then, you know, you're up a creek without a paddle, so to speak. And marketing is not a one-time thing. Marketing is an all-the-time, ongoing thing. So if you're going to be in business, including the voiceover business, you have to accept the idea that you will be marketing and you must be marketing to some degree. Um, certainly in the beginning of your business, heavily, heavily, heavily. Of course, it starts with a great product, great demos, all of that. But once you have that, um, and again, you know, you guys who feel confused as to what to do, go go to buildaweeslive.com. I've got a free video there. It's almost an hour long, but it's got a lot of great information talking about what you need to get started. That'll help be helpful to you. And then if you want to learn more about my voiceover blueprint program, uh, you'll be given a chance there to schedule uh, a time for a phone call to answer questions and to, to, and to uh, talk more about it. But yeah, marketing, and, and you know, let, let me tell you this, Marketing is my, ex it's one, it's one of my expertises. That's, I mean, I have a background, a strong background in marketing and, and in all humility, I'm really good at it, but I don't necessarily feel like doing it all the time. I don't get up in the morning and think, wow, I get to market today. Sometimes it's exciting and fun, but generally speaking, I would way rather be behind a microphone than marketing. My goodness. 
there's something that's terribly exciting about getting a job because of your efforts in marketing, but I'll take recording over marketing any day of the week. So it's one of the things that it's a must do and you must know how to do it and you must be able to do it well. Moldova, Daniel, hey, good morning. And Mitch in Brooklyn, what's up? Clint says, how important would you say having a coach would be in someone just starting? Uh, Clint, I would say it's, it's of supreme importance. You don't know what you don't know when you first get started. And um, what you don't want to, you don't want to become dependent on a coach. In other words, I, I meet people quite often who are in this relationship with a coach where the coach for years is telling them, you're not ready, you're not ready, which is ridiculous. Uh, you should be able, I mean, you should be up and running. My students, I have them up and get them up and running like immediately, but they get coaching along the way. So um, you shouldn't be like dependent forever on a coach. I mean, you should always have a coach to go to, you know, for checkups and to, to make sure, you know, that your uh, diagnostics, a diagnostic checkup to make sure everything's working properly and you're doing the best you can, but not a dependent relationship where you have to always, always be leaning on the coach and the coach saying, you're not ready, you're not ready, you're not ready. That's, that is, that's BS. And if you're in a relationship like that, I say run, absolutely run. But you need a coach and you get first get started. There's so much you don't know yet. Um, and from a performance standpoint, you can't hear yourself objectively. And so it's really important. Hey, Mike. Oh, let's see, Tess from Atlanta. <laughs> hey, y'all, she says, and hey, y'all back. Uh, my biggest obstacle is where, oops, man, I was reading it and the, the stream moved on me. Let's see, where was I at? Well, what what they were asking was, their, their biggest concern was they were worried about meeting deadlines and certainly, one of the important aspects, one of the, there's a several really important aspects of voiceover, but one of the, them is customer service and being able to work with clients and meeting deadlines and holding, doing what you say you're going to do and communicate. I cannot even begin to tell you how important that is, because if you don't do that, you won't keep a business. You will not get repeat clients. And if you don't get repeat clients, it makes it really hard to, to, uh, to build income. You need to build, um, you've got to be able to build repeat clients and that comes through meeting deadlines. So if it's, uh, you know, again, I don't know the specific issue that you're dealing with. Um, maybe it's, to, if it's to time and management, maybe you need to, you know, learn some time management skills. Maybe that's it. Maybe you're not ready to get into voiceover. And, um, you know, I, frankly, I think anybody, if you want to do this, you can figure it out. Uh, I've got, I know uh, I've got a number of students, you know, who work other jobs and they do this at night or in the morning or, you know, I've had students who do, you know, will get up four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning to do their voiceover work before they go to work. So it just depends, you know, it depends on what's important and then learning the, the time management skills to do that. Well, guys, we're approaching uh, 830 here at least. Eastern time, 8.30, and uh, I've got a uh, pretty busy morning here in the office and in the studio, so I'm going to have to run, but thanks for being here. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will not be here on Monday. I have some other business to attend to on Monday, so I will not be here, but I will be back on Tuesday, and um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.